guys. Uh, welcome to this video on hands-on assist. This is Nick. He's going to be uh, the demo buddy. Hello. Um, first of all, I want to say that this video um, is going to be a bunch of different techniques. Um, I want to try and keep it pretty simple, but more to understand um, why we're doing different types of assist. Um, you can pause the video at any time you want and kind of practice it. You have somebody to practice on these days. Um, otherwise, you have the videos for future reference and, and you can practice on it later on. Um, I will be doing a... Afterwards, I will be doing a whole practice where I'm using some of these techniques um, as a class setting. Um, so, so this is going to be more broken down where we show some of the techniques and then later on you can watch the video and, and try and actually um, see how it functions in a flow. Uh, I want you to make sure you have read the PowerPoint slide on assist because that's where we're going to be talking about the ethics about giving hands on assist. We will not go over that right now. Um, he's okay with me touching him. He'll be fine. Okay. Yes, but important that we know the ethics. Um, so I want you to read that first and that's also going to go over the different types of instructions and assist. So. Make sure you read that and do the quiz that goes with that. Okay, so um, the first thing that's also going to be on your slides, but I want to just say again, the most important thing is the concept of ahimsa, right? So ahimsa being uh, the not doing any harm, which is just the first limb of um, the yamas in our yoga sutras, right? So that is really the first thing we, as yoga instructors, think about in anything that we do. We don't want to teach a sequence that causes harm on the body, and we also don't want to do any hands-on assist that could potentially do any harm. So remember, um, that means that uh, we only take the students where they automatically will go with us. So if I'm trying to move him into a posture, if I feel a lot of resistance to go in that direction, I don't go any further. That means it's not it's not going to be right for his body. Uh, secondly, we uh, we can always ask if we're not sure. It's okay to ask more, less. Is this okay? Um, I don't recommend just saying is this good because most of the time the students are very uh, nice to us and they'll just say yes, even though it might not be the best. So it's better to ask. Give them some options like more and less is this is this enough um and then the last thing just always know what you're trying to do don't just give hands on assist for the purpose of giving hands on assist so know what your purpose is with doing what you're doing um so just that was just a couple of things i wanted to go over so in your powerpoint slide you're going to see that there are a bunch of different types of assist with different purposes um most of them goes along with making the alignment of the posture correct. Um, but we'll go over them <coughs> little by little. The first one I want to go over is um, muscle activation. So getting some of the muscles engaging in the way that we want. So how about we get you into a lunge position. So you can start with yeah, one foot forward and then the other foot to the back. Good, and you can start with your hands down your side, that's fine. Um, <coughs> we can ask him first to try and bend a little bit deeper into the front leg. Good. And what I want to make sure is that this leg, back leg is really strong and engaged. So what I could um, would be to put my fist here on the back side of his thigh and then ask him to push against my hand. So you can see this back knee starts to straighten. So that's one of the first ways we can get that back leg to activate. At the same time, you can try and get the other leg activated by putting my hand here on the back of his calf and then ask him to pull in against my hand, so pushing backwards. Good. So now this leg is engaging. You could also do the other way. So this one is going to actually activate his hamstring, so the back side of his thigh. If I wanted the front side of his thigh to work harder, then I would put my hand on the front instead and ask him to push forward. So it kind of depends on your purpose again. What is it that you're trying to make your students experience? Now try and lift your arms up and overhead. 
So now the arms are overhead and now I got, I'm gonna want him to really work the muscles here on the back side in between his shoulder blades. So I'm gonna tell him we do this a lot in yoga, right? We do the cactus arms. So bend your elbows and squish your shoulder blades into together. So sometimes it becomes kind of like a lazy, just like a bend in the arms and don't really, really know why we're doing this. I'm gonna make him activate these muscles by putting my hands underneath his elbows and then ask him to push against, so pushing downwards. So now he's actually activating much more. Can you feel that? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> Good. All right, lift your hands back up. Good. And let's just try and switch legs just for easiness. And just quickly do some of the same things. So we get the back leg activated. Once again, just to repeat, you can get the front side of his leg activated by pushing forward. So it's almost going to feel like he's trying to straighten out the knee, and we know the function of the quadriceps, the front side of the thigh, is going to be to straighten the knee. And then we can do the opposite. So we can hold, sorry, and he can pull. So if I wanted the hamstring. So this would, for example, be really good um, right before a hamstring stretch. And then lift your arms up and overhead. Good. And then cactus the arms. And we want to make sure we start this not too high because if we start it up here, he's not going to be able to push too much. Or if we start it too far down, again, it's not going to be the same experience. But we, if we get it right up from his shoulders, then we ask him to push down. At the same time, what happens when you push down here? His chest is going to open a little bit more, and he's actually lifting a little up in the posture. It's almost like he's using the resistance of my hands to lift upwards in the posture. Good. Nice. Good. So you can see, as we're doing the muscle activation, it also changes the posture, so it helps the posture get in alignment. But we're mostly working on getting the muscles engaged, so I'm not just trying to push his joints into a certain direction. I'm trying to make him do the work by making his muscle engaging. Um, so that's the muscle activation. So we can also work with um, kind of like the energy flow of the of the posture. So meaning, uh, is there an upward lift? Is there um, yeah, are we working with gravity? Are we folding forward? Um, are we moving sideways? Um, are we twisting? Um, so we can try and move with the energy flows of the postures. So let's have you reach your hands overhead in this perfect Tadasana position. Perfect. Good. And then try and look up towards your hands and let your palms touch. And take a little bit of a back bend. Reach backwards with your hands. Good. So what I could do here is like actually push a little bit here and then have him lean backwards if you can. I'm going to have a little more of a back bend, but I'm holding underneath his, or in between his shoulder blades, so he's lifting more from the chest than from the lower back. And then for some people, they like just kind of hanging back a little bit, giving him a hop up. Good. Nice. So we could also use the muscle activation here. You know, some people will do like cactus arms here, so you can bend your elbows and lean back, back bend, and then cactus arm and press into my hands. So the same thing. And it also helps him move a little bit upwards, as we talk about, and a little less into the low back. Inhale, reach your hands up. Good. And on your exhale, forward fold. We have a good example here with some good tight hamstrings. Let's have you move a little bit backwards so you can see how the picture. Perfect. So with a tight hamstrings, a tight hamstrings actually pulls in the pelvis here. So it's pulling the pelvis down. So we're having more of a posterior tilt. Whereas in a forward fold, we would really like it to be an anterior tilt. So when this happens, we'll ask them to bend their knees first. And you can bend them quite a bit. So it's going to give a little more space to get this anterior tilt. So he actually still um, has a very tight hamstrings. So he can, you can see his belly is kind of far away from his thighs. So try and bend a little bit more. Good. And that helps a little bit. We wouldn't have him stay here for way too long because he's really he's doing an anterior um, compression of his discs into the front side of his spine. So this is the unfortunate situation of people with really tight hamstring. You just don't want to stay here for too long. But what I mean with like the energy flow here would be to put a hand here on, on um, the sacrum. 
and then I ask him to push up against the hand. Okay, so that's gonna help a little bit with that anterior tilt. And then the energy flow means I'm leaning, he's moving downward, so I'm allowing this movement of releasing down towards the earth. So that means the energy flow, the, the flow of the energy in this posture is moving down. Uh, some people will then end up doing this, like pull off his whole shirt, so we can just kind of like hold with one thumb and then go to the other side. So we're going to try and come all the way up to stand again, hands overhead. Good, so the energy flow here could also go upwards through the arms. So as we, as we all know, we've talked about this before, we have an external rotation of the arms in this position, so that means the palms are facing inwards. A lot of instructors will cue like shoulders down and away from the ears, but there's not actually a lot of space for getting the shoulders down when your arms are in this position. You can still tell them to let the shoulder blades come down, but it's not going to make a big difference. But there is this lift, the energy is moving upwards here, so I can promote this external rotation and then lift him kind of upwards. Now we're working with that energy flow and then tell him to ground down into the feet. So now we have those two pulling energies. One more breath. Excellent. Good, so that could be an energy flow. Uh, take a breath and lift your hands up again. And on your exhale, come back into the forward fold. So now I'm doing that energy flow. Good. Inhale, find halfway lift. Lift your spine halfway. Good, so once again, he has a little bit of a rounding in the spine. Again, that comes from the hamstring. So I'm going to actually tell him to bend the knees. A lot of times you'll see instructors not wanting to do that. And then I would want him to bend his head. Get nice and long, right? So the energy flow in this position would be the opposite. So that would be this way. So try and go back down to forward fold. Exhale, forward fold. Go exhale, forward fold. And then we'll do inhale, halfway lift. Halfway. And then I'll move the other way with the hand. So that's the energy flow, right? And so a few other things we could do, if you are comfortable with your students doing this, we can promote that anterior tilt of the pelvis. So I'm pushing my thumbs forward and my index fingers backwards. He's still rounding a little bit in that lower back. Oh, I just have to tell him, you know. Good, bend the knees again, just a little bit, yeah. That's gonna help. So another thing that sometimes happens is that people will have a rounding all the way up through the space between the shoulder blades. Can you just kind of pop your chest in and lift your shoulder blades for a few minutes? Yes, like that. So you'll see people kind of having this position. So we could also help align the posture by pulling the shoulder blades in towards each other. Good, so shoulder blades in. Alignment here, that energy flow that moves backwards. Good. So we can do that. So we can go with the with the posture here, back and forth position. All right. Um, so let's have you come up. Quite a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So next thing. Um, I want to go over just a chaturanga and an upward facing dog. So this is going to be both muscle activation and the energy of the posture. So if you can go into a plank position. Uh, on your hands, high plank, yeah. Good. So kind of like the pre before a chaturanga, right? Okay. So he has a pretty good plank. So there are a couple of options here we could, we could have. If you are not very strong in the core and his hips were kind of dumping down, and I felt comfortable with this student. I could actually hold my hands around his hips and kind of promote the stability of, of holding the hips up. I'm gonna do something else this time. Inhale, lean forward over your hands. And on your exhale, lower yourself halfway down, chaturanga. And then I'm gonna squeeze these arms in. He's a little bit low, can you come a little higher? Yeah, good. And then I'm squeezing the arms in. So it'll help people who are not super strong in the arms. Inhale, upward facing dog. So I'm going to open the chest here on the front, you know, the energy flow of this is an opening of the chest. And then to also promote it, I'm putting my knees behind his shoulder blade and then I'm squeezing the shoulder blades in towards each other, opening the chest. 
So sometimes we also have these doll legs that he actually has a little bit right now. So we're gonna have him ground down into the feet. Good. And then can you activate your legs and lift your legs off the ground? Yeah, that's it. Perfect. And then exhale downward facing. So in downward facing dog, we really work a lot with the mind man. This is the posture that we take probably the most in a yoga class. Um, so some things, if we start from the back here, um, we can promote those heels to come down towards the ground. I don't have a lot of space here, but I could use my feet and kind of push the heels down towards the ground. Good. For him, he has that rounding in the spine. So we want the knees to be bent for sure. And then again, if you're comfortable with your students, you can try and get that anterior tilt by moving your thumbs off the spine and then your fingers back towards the heels, trying to promote the anterior tilt. Good, so we still have a little bit of this rounding in, in the back. Um, again, if you're really comfortable with your student, you can get behind them. You can grab your arms around the pelvis, interlace the fingers, and then I'm pressing my hands down, but pulling back, using all my body weight instead of the muscle activity of my body, saving myself from the pain. So that's another one. Uh, sometimes you'll also see people uh, jumping down more into the hands or into the feet. So sometimes what happens if I just come here, and I'm gonna try and like push his pelvis up and back, or even from the back as I'm pulling back, the student will start walk their hands towards the feet. Um, but we're not really trying to make him make a shorter stand, we're just trying to make him move more towards the back. So, without stepping too hard, I'm gonna step onto his hands with the soft part of my feet, so that the hand stays grounded, and then I can lean my way back into the pelvis upward and backwards. How's that? That's good. <laughs> God, you can drop down on your knees. <laughs> I'm making it work. It's great. All right, so that was a, a couple of those. Um, let's try and work just a couple of um, getting deeper into some stretches. So let's start with taking a seat and bring your legs out to front. Down, legs out straight in front of you. You can move a little bit this way. So again, we have a person here with good tight hamstrings. So most likely you're going to start seeing this rounding in the low back. So a couple of things we could do. We can offer him blocks. We can put him under the knees. We could also lift his pelvis up by sitting on the block. Um, for now, we're just going to keep it with house blocks. First of all, flex your feet. Make your legs nice and active. And let's start by bending the knees quite a lot. Bending. Good. There you go. And that means now you can already lengthen the spine more. Good. Take a breath in. Lift your chest up. And then as you exhale, you can begin to hinge forward into a seated forward fold. Okay. So now he's in a seated forward fold. Um, again, so for him, I would tell him it's okay to keep the knees bent. But let's just try and get them a little more straight if you can. There. Good. So a few things we can work with here again. So we're trying to get him deeper into the stretch. But again, we want to be mindful. I'm not just going to come here and like press his chest down towards his thighs. Um, that's going to put too much of that anterior compression into the lower spine. So a few things we can work with. We can try and ground the pelvis down. So we're grounding the pelvis down. We can also work with this anterior tilt of the pelvis. So we're trying to lengthen all the way from the lower back. Good. So I'm pushing my thumbs off the spine. And then my fingers are pushing the hands out from the other fingers. Good. And as we move his way a little, start from, always start from the lower back because this is where we want to protect the spine, right? Not getting too deep into this flexion. So I'm going to press upwards from the lower back, kind of giving him a little massage. So his chest is going to start lifting a little bit, almost like that halfway lift. Good, and then the 
they're okay there, you can keep one hand there, and then you can work with that energy flow up the spine. And then you can another neck one. So we're always watching out for that part of the spine. Um, it would be worse trying to straighten the legs completely. Yeah. Now you can see when his legs are, are straight, his spine is going to be behind his pelvis, and this is where we're putting that compression into the back. So if you do see that, um, this is where we'll either have them bend the knees or bring a block in under the, under the hips so that they can find that length in the back. Um, one. Let's try with... So one, one thing I see a lot with teachers um, that we do not want to do is that they come up here and then they just start to press with their full body weight down in towards the ground. Um, most of the time that's going to be way too much. This is already an intense stretch. Um, so I'm not looking to just like forcefully press in deeper into it. But think about the purposes again of the posture and where the energy flows are going. So I'm going to, instead of just pushing down, I'm going to move it backwards towards the back leg, and then we can move a little bit more down towards the ground. So I'm not, I'm not pushing a lot, and I'm kind of feeling at that point where I don't feel him moving with me anymore, I stop. And then we can work with the energy flow of the posture, moving one hand at the pelvis, slightly one hand up the spine. What also feels pretty good is going diagonal, so I can come in from here, and then I can go to the opposite shoulder, one hand, over to the other side. One other thing I like to do is, for some people who are pretty open in this posture, who can take getting a little bit deeper, is getting that external rotation of the thigh. So putting a hand on the inner thigh and kind of rotating more or less a beginning of the thigh. Release, release, release. Let's try and switch legs just for the sake of grittiness. So another thing I have to emphasize is um, try and not release super quickly because it's going to have this elastic like bouncing effect. If I'm putting pressure down into this pose or in one direction and then I hold it there and then I just let go in that position, it's going to have this bouncing effect of like just swinging back into where he was. Um, and that doesn't feel very calming. It doesn't feel very good. So always try and go in and out slowly. And the same thing when I go in, I don't just start quickly pressing down. So I put my hands on the pelvis, I move backwards, and then maybe down. Now I could, actually I could feel a little bit of a muscle activation over here on his right leg, and that means that that's not, that means that his muscles are like telling him, don't go any deeper. And then again I hold one hand on the sacrum, so kind of, uh, I'm not just pushing down towards the ground, I'm actually also like the heel, and then I can come in through the spine. We can do the diagonal, so I'm going to come in from one side, over to the opposite side, another one, over to the other side, and then apply external rotation. Letting it go to where it automatically will pop. Another thing, I'm also concerned about my own posture here. I'm trying to keep my spine long and straight. And using the weight of my body, if I'm like over here, and then I'm trying to do stuff, um, I'm going to be using way too much of, of my muscle strength instead of the efficiency of the body weight. So always 
think about your posture as well. We don't want you to end up being injured because you're doing hands on this. Um, there's actually one more thing I would like to do. Uh, so let's try and swing the right leg forward. And we'll try and get you into a bunch of pellets. So tuck the left toes under and press the back off the mat. Keep your left hand on the floor. Left hand and then press the back knee off the mat and then straighten out the right hand towards the ceiling. Good. So a few things here. Um, so this is where we work with the alignments of the posture, but I'm also working with the energy flows. Um, and I'm also trying to get deeper into the twist. So a lot of things going on. First of all, we want to try and stabilize the pelvis here. Um, right now his left side is sinking down a little bit. I'm going to try and stabilize the pelvis. If this happens, most likely to benefit from a block underneath. Good. So that will break him up a little bit higher. And there's a little more room. So again, sometimes this knee is going to start falling outwards. Try and just let it fall a little bit outwards to the right side. Yeah, sometimes this will happen because people don't have a lot of space to do it. And I'll put one hand on the inner side and tell him to press against it. Yeah, and that will guide the knee back into the line. Get that muscle activation going. So now you can see his. His arm here is falling a little bit forward. Sometimes you'll see people trying to overcompensate and they'll like reach the hand all the way behind the body because they're trying so hard to twist more. But what we really want is to actually try and get a straight line through the shoulders and up to that top hand. So you want to, if you're going to try and help him twist more, you're not just going to take his hand and pull him backwards or even his shoulder. You want to actually stabilize the lower shoulder. So I'm using my leg here or my hand. And then I am holding on to the arm here, making sure that there's a straight line from the shoulder and out through the arm. And then I can push down with the left hand down towards the floor and the right hand pulls up. Is that good? Okay. And try and activate that inner thigh of your right leg. Let's the right knee. side just for the evenness of your your body all the leg forward Good. get that block back in on the inner hand perfect so first thing I did was to put a hand on the inner side of his knee asking him to push against it that will get those inner thighs activated and then again, re slowly remove that hand. If you're removing it quickly and he's in full activation of that leg, he's going to collapse. Again, we can also make sure that this back leg stays activated. Once again, by making him push up against his hand. Good. And that will also help this hip lift up a little bit because we're trying to get those hips square. Then again, we got to have some stability here. Putting one hand on his shoulder blade. I'm grabbing my arm all the way around so we can get the straight line from the shoulder and up through the other arm. And then I'm pushing right hand down and left hand up. Trying to avoid that even line with that top shoulder blade. One more breath in. And exhale. Good. You're getting your workout in. Let's have you go into Shavasana. I love Shavasana. I love very good ones. This is your least favorite pose, huh? <laughs> Can you move a little? I know we don't have a lot of space. Can you move a little bit there? So this is the last one of the ones we, we, we talk about, the one that promotes relaxation. Um, so this one doesn't have as much to do with alignment, um, but more to do with, like, let's, let's make it really enjoyable and relaxing. There are things you can look for though. Um, some people, and especially some guys who are working out their chest a lot, will have this upward rotation of their shoulders. And these people are really gonna enjoy that chest opener that most of you probably know. 
or wherever you put the hands here on the chest. And then I, you can take a breath in. And on the exhale, then I'll kind of allow the shoulders to come out. What I actually do also like, you can change that up a little bit. Take a breath in, and actually on the inhale, I already start expanding the chest because that's where there is a chest expansion. And then on the exhale, I move my hand to the top of the shoulders and allow the shoulders to um, go downwards. So that would be one. Um, or you'll have some people who are tight in the neck, so try and lift your chin up towards the ceiling when you practice. So some people will lie like this. So I'm still looking. I'm still looking at this person's body. I'm not just doing things for doing things. I'm looking at this person's body, and I'm like, oh, it looks like he's a little tight on the neck, and could use some release there. So I'm putting my hand, my fingers, in here on the neck. I'm going to pull backwards, giving him a little massage here. And as my fingertips get to the back of his skull, I'm kind of wrapping my fingers into the skull. My thumbs are almost on the jawbone. Try not to put them too much into the ears. Um, and then from here, I pull back towards myself. I lift the head off the ground. And then from here, you can slowly keep pulling. My hands are actually, my fingers are sliding off that edge of the skull. Slowly pull it down. And just get that top of the chin up a little bit. So again, I'm using the knowledge of of what I'm seeing. Um, another thing we could do if this person was super arching into the lower back. Um, yeah, perfect. So we, so what we can do against that is to get the glutes lengthened back towards the heels. And a good way we can do that, can you bring it a little bit apart? Let's see if this works if you don't have a lot of space to work with here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and grab his feet, or his ankles, I should say, releasing the feet off the ground. And then I'm lifting up, and then I'm pulling a little bit backwards, back towards myself. And then I'm going to just kind of move it side to side, trying to get his glute lengthens towards his heels, and that way the lower back is getting down towards the ground. And then you'll slowly keep lengthening backwards. Lower back is getting a little more flat towards the ground. Um, yeah, I think those are good ones to use. Of course, you can always do the relaxation of the muscles of the face. So you can do the third eye, the massages. Somebody has tension headaches or are tight in the jaw. You can find a jawline to support the back of the jawbone. I think one issue we sometimes see is that people want to do temple massages, but they're pushing super hard into to the side of the temple. Uh, we do want to be firm when we do hands on assist. But we also want to be thinking about the places that are more sensitive. There's no skull to kind of protect the tissue in here. So try and be gentle when you do this area. And again, as we move in, we also move slowly out. In Shavasana, I like to make myself noticeable. Um, some people can kind of drop away a little bit and almost fall asleep. And you're kind of taking them out of that relaxation state if you just come in and invade their space um, without them knowing. So what I'll do, I'll just make some sounds with my hand over their face. And that way they know I'm moving in. Um, at the same time, that kind of creates some nice heat. And if you're into Reiki, uh, you could even get some of that heat over the hands. essential oils, that's another 
which you just read as well. So you can see how to enhance the picture if you want to. On this line, though, relaxing, uh, we're just going to finish up this video. Um, so a couple of things we talked about is um, the purpose of your hands-on assist, knowing why you want to do and what it is that you're trying to make the student do. Uh, don't just do it for the sake of doing it. Um, and we'll talk or I'll show you more how you can do some of these things into an integrated practice, uh, not being in the way of the students when they start flowing. Um, but I think that's it for now. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy it and feel free to email me and ask me questions.